All right, enough about that. Let's work on this. So at this point, I've got my files here, and here's the deal. Um, I want to just show you, we're going to start by opening this test cone volume calculator, because I want you to see how you run the test. So you just right-click, edit with idle, and then we're going to, like, I'm going to move this to the side, and you're going to see all this stuff here. You're going to leave this exactly as it is. However, I just want to point out a couple things. This import cone volume calculator, that's what allows us to run that file. And then in cone volume calculator, you are going to write, and it's not there yet because you're using what's called test-driven development, where we have a test before we've even written it. You can have this function calculate cone volume. Now, that's on the readme file, so the information is in there. Okay, And this is what's going on, so let's just go ahead and full, the, do this. So it's going to run this function, and it's go you're going to send it 20.0, 10.0. And then you're expected that function should return this number if you give it those two numbers. And so the result is what the function is giving us. So we're comparing this number to the result. Now let's run this, and you're going to see a lot of failure. And that's okay. Failure's good in this case, because it means our tests are working, okay? We can run tests, and it ran eight tests, and we had eight errors. And you can just look at it. There's an attribute error, and it says that cone volume calculator has no attribute, calculate cone volume. Well, that is the function you're gonna write. And why does it not have it? Let me show you. Go ahead and open up cone volume uh, calculator with idle. Cone volume calculator, that is all you see. And if you look at this, no wonder it had those errors. There's nothing here. There's no function. Okay. But then you might look at this and go, what the, what is all this, right? Well, here's just information, right? And then this is right here is a really interesting thing here. Okay, let's go ahead and just start solving this one. The first thing you want to do is define a function. So you'd use the DEF code. So you write DEF. We're going to define this function. And, and by the way, this assumes you know how to write a function. And if you look here, that's the name of the function. Well, I'm going to go ahead and open up the other part here, which is the test one. Actually, in fact, let's even go all the way back to the repository, which is here. And on the readme, it'll say calculate cone volume. That's our function. So I'm just going to copy it right out of there. And if you just copy it, you'll know you wrote it correctly as far as the name. So I'm going to paste that. Okay. And then you start by, this is the function header. And one of the things, it's going to receive two values. What is it going to receive? We're going to go back here. It's going to receive base radius as a float, height as a float. So I'm just going to copy this right here, base radius. Now, the cool thing about a function is you don't have to name it this way. You can name it whatever you want, and the reason why is this is going to be a local parameter. Okay, So I could just put base or base r for shorthand, and then I could place h for height. Okay, It doesn't matter, Okay, because it's just for the internal working. The only thing that does matter is that this first parameter is actually going to represent the base radius, and the second one is going to represent height. And if you're not sure, just take a look at Here's our example. 20.0 is the base radius, 10 is the height, and then it should result, it should return that information. Okay, so we're going to go back here. And I'm just going to go ahead and just fake this out a little bit so you can test this out. And I'm going to return 42. Point zero. Okay. Now, this is not going to work, right? Because that, that would not be a very handy one. In fact, none of these values are right. Uh, none of these correspond with 42. Although you could get the right input, you might get it to work. Okay. But I'm just going to return that 42. Okay. Now, um, the other thing is I want to point out, I forgot to mention, is the output should be a, a float rounded to the second digit. Okay. If you look here, like 8. Uh, 0 0.80, that's to the second digit. Okay, So we're going to go back here, and I want to explain what this if name is equal to main is all about. I'm going to save my changes here. Okay, And then I'm just going to uh, run this. 
F5. And you see, like, nothing really happens. And you're like, gee, this doesn't really seem to work. Well, if you want to test this file out, you can actually call it right here. Okay, so I'm going to remove that. And now I can do this. I can do calculate cone volume, and I'll give it like 10 and 2. Okay, actually, I should do a print statement here, right? So we'll just put answer equals calculate cone volume, and then we're going to print answer. So what this is all about is this is for you to kind of test out your function inside. And technically, we're not actually designing this to run normally. We're designing it for other programs to call the function and run it like the test one does. I'm going to type F5 to run it. And you actually see, look, and we get 42. So that's for me testing. Just personally, I want to test this thing out. I can do it in here. Or I can go over to the other file, which is the test cone volume calculator. I can run it. And immediately you're going to see we have eight failures again. And that's because we keep giving it 42.0. And none of our test cases are looking for that number. If we really want to cheat a little bit here, I can copy this and check this out. I'm going to copy this answer, and I'm just going to return that answer right there. And I'm going to run it. Again, I'm going to save my changes here. Let's just go ahead and run it, F5 to run it. It's a good idea to run it here so that you can see what number you're getting. That Now you know this is safe. And then we're going to go back to the test. I'm going to run it again. And now we have seven failures with eight tests. And that's because the eighth test expects this number, right? Now, of course, you can't get anywhere if all you're doing is returning one solid value. This is a really awful function. And the other thing you may want to know is there's a part about round, and I just want to point out round just so you know. If it asks you to round to the third or the fourth digit, we can, we can do this. We're gonna, I can put uh, answer, or I can say volume equals... And then I'm going to give it some big, long, random number here. Two, eight, whatever. Okay. So I'm going to give it that particular number. I'm going to get rid of a couple digits, like so. And then I am going to do round volume two. And actually, I should say volume equals round volume two, and then I'm going to return volume. Okay, we're going to go ahead and test this out again. When I run it, notice I get the same answer as before, even though I'm returning a variable now. And by the way, we're a lot closer to having this whole thing solved, right? Because now we have a variable. We are actually rounding it. We're going to run it and see if we can uh, fail only seven functions with our new change. F5 to run again. We still have seven failures, so we're on our way. So the last part here is, well, what's our, what's our formula to calculate the cone volume? Well, I've included a link here, and I should have put it in the readme, and I forgot. So you're going to want to make sure you check that out. So I go to the calculator online. I paste it here. Ah, we got all these calculators here. We're looking for the formula for volume of a cone, cone right here, volume equals, I'm just going to copy this right here, and I'm going to put it into here just to help out. So watch what I do here. I'm just going to do this my, for my own personal reference. I'm going to paste that stuff here. I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to go to edit, no, format, and I'm going to comment out the region. So I have my formula here. One-third times pi times r times 2 times height. Okay. So that's got pi there. And then for pi, we're going to need to import math. So I'm going to import math. All right. And then on here, I'm going to go ahead and calculate volume. I'm going to go ahead and write this formula out. 1 divided by 3. We're going to have to put a multiplication here. Math dot pi times r. Wait a minute. 
this little R is not right, but I'm going to go ahead and test it anyway, just because a lot of you may forget to do something like that. Times 2, times H, save our changes, run it, and we get an error on here. Okay, so now we realize we have a problem, Houston. All right, we'll take a look there. R is not defined. Okay, that's because it's base R. So if you want to, you can just change it to R right here, run it, 41.89. That's not the number I'm looking for. What went wrong? Well, let's go ahead and run, let's go ahead and run the test anyway, just to make sure. Run it. And we're still failed. Now we're failing eight because we're not getting the right results. We did something wrong with the formula. Can you tell what the problem is? I'm zooming in on the cone formula. That two was a subscript or a superscript. That meant that's to the power of two, not multiplied by two. That's what we need here. Now let's try running it. F5 to run. 209.44. I still don't think this is the right one. We'll run the test again. Ah, look at this. We ran eight tests. Okay. At this point, this is good. It worked. We ran all eight tests and we had no problems. You see that from restart? Ran eight tests. Okay. You're okay. So now you need to turn it in. So the first thing you want to do is you want to save your changes. Okay. And then to turn it in, all you have to do is send your changes to this program right here back to the repository, and then you're almost done. So this is how you send your changes. First thing, it's always a good idea to write get status to see what has changed. Okay, Get status shows us that we have modified conevolumecalculator.py. Next, you're going you're gonna to stage your changes. That's git add. And you can write out the full file name. I like to just do git add dot. That adds everything. And now I got a commit. That's git commit dash m stands for message. I put my message. And I'm going to put solved cone volume calculator. Okay. And as long as it doesn't yell at you like you did something wrong, you're good. And now the final step is you got to push your changes to the repository. That is git push origin master. Now you know this is the same as the first one, only instead of pulling, you're pushing. And this is just a way of sending it. So what you're going to have to do is when you push it, it's going to ask you for your username and password. See that? So go ahead and put your username and password. Okay. If it likes you, I mean, if it likes your, um, if it likes your username and password, this is what you're going to get. Counting objects, delta compression, resolving, blah, 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 blah. When you've done that and you've pushed it, guess what I get to see? For those of you watching along, I've now set it up so you can see the correct solution for this with your git commands. When I, as your teacher, go here, I see this right here. Century HS programming volume of a calculator, SCM draft, check it out. Right here, I see that it ran and it passed both tests. All I have to do is click on here. And bam, I see right here, ran eight tests in 0 0.0 seconds. I also see another one's getting run right now. Hey, that's mine. Bob the Chicken is being run as we speak. So in a moment, when that's all done, it'll tell me if I passed. And if you want, you can just watch how this plays out. Hey, you guys have a great weekend. Good week next week. Feel free to send me messages on Schoology. I'll be trying to check those. In case you got any questions or not. Get to my heroes. Same, man.
And you can see right there, Randy, test, okay. And now it turns green here. And then I see over here, looks like this is the one it's running for my Python 3.6. So I can see 3.5, uh, 3.6, both of those have run, and we're good. Let me just say, as long as you've made all your changes and they work and you run the test, as long as you push it, it should work. Thanks for watching.